<sighs> so there's been some recent uh, oh uh, uh, greetings by the way I, I play xbox and whatever so there's been some recent news about microsoft dev mode and emulation on the xbox some individuals have reported a deactivation of their dev accounts speculating that microsoft is now cracking down on those using the feature for emulation and homebrewing Stop! understandably many have been fearing the end of retroarch and other emulation programs on the xbox one and series console well it just so happens there's nothing to really fear right now. Turns out it was all a big old blunder on Microsoft's end. Let's recap. On January 5th, 2022, news broke out of Microsoft deactivating dev mode accounts on Xboxes as well as terminating developer partner enrollment. A post was made on the GBA 10 forums on Tuesday, January 4th, of one user receiving an email from Microsoft noting them that their dev mode and partner enrollment had been disabled due to inactivity. Ultimately, the dev feature is to be used for, well, development of games and apps and has to be in good standing in the MS store. Essentially, you should have, as the email says, an active presence in the store. If this criteria is not met, you are violating the partner program's code of conduct and Microsoft has the right to disable your account and restrict access to dev mode. Several other users, including Modern Vintage Gamer, who was the person I learned about this issue from, confirmed it by also showing their emails, saying the same thing, and explaining their restricted status to dev mode. Thus, the assumption was made that Microsoft was finally putting their foot down on using their consoles and features to emulate games. Fuck you! This was heartbreaking to many. Especially to those who recently put out a video gushing on about how good emulation is on a series console and why you should do it. Well, don't I just look like a fresh asshole? As MVG said in his video, this would essentially mean hackers would try to go back to the drawing board to try and bypass the Xbox security in order to emulate once again or more, which was something dev mode completely managed to ward off for years. But going through all different kinds of hoops to bypass console security while risking an account ban or more is agreeably not worth it to the average gamer or Xbox owner. Microsoft would also have to tighten security further restricting what people could do with their consoles, which is an element that separates them from their console competitors. But more importantly, this screws over people that actually use dev mode for their games and apps, giving them little to no notice about the deactivation of their account. There would be a swarm of lawsuits and refund complaints. Watch Modern Vintage Gamer's video about it, as he is far more eloquent and far more informative about the risks this poses. This was looking pretty grim. I was checking my email all day dreading the message saying my Xbox emulation days were over. Never happened though. Because, in less than 24 hours, a Microsoft representative, Jason Ronald McDonald, announced via Twitter that Microsoft had no plans to remove or disable developer mode on consoles, and the sudden deactivation of accounts was part of regularly scheduled maintenance to clean up inactive accounts. He then provided an address to contact support if your account was wrongfully deactivated and you'd like to have it back in a much timelier fashion. Since then, Microsoft has been hard at work restoring these accounts. So there you go. The cause of hysteria in the Xbox emulating community was all due to an automatic system. At this point, there is no evidence to support the idea Microsoft is putting a stop to emulation in dev mode. It was an honest mistake that made some folks leap to conclusions. I'm sure MS is well aware of the use of emulators on dev mode but can't openly acknowledge or support it as it would conflict with their partners and competitors' interests. Especially this one. So emulation on dev mode is still safe, but let this small incident remind you that any changes or system MS has in place already can really screw emulation on those boxos. Be wary because emulation on these machines, as we've learned, is quite fragile. For now, rest assured your emulation files, saves, and games are fine in dev mode. Now go play some classics. In that brief period of uncertainty and despair, I was looking into alternatives on the Xbox, so I turned to the underground scene of Retroarch on retail mode. And from just a brief look into it, it's honestly quite impressive. From what I've seen and tested, games on Retroarch, DuckStation, and other emulators run at the same quality that I experienced in dev mode. The file transfers and the manipulation of them in order to run certain cores and emulators is similar to the network drive method except it uses FTP. Don't worry about understanding any of that, even I don't fully get it. The biggest update to all this is the removal of the whitelist procedure, which in the very recent past had you submit the email you use for your Xbox Live account to some guy in a Discord server in order to privately download. It was kind of sketchy. That's no longer the case and all the files you need are available via web page. Use the Xbox's internet browser, Edge, to access the page and download via MS Store. 
The major downsides are it's very limited internal storage, 30 gigs, but most games can be played off an external storage device so it's not a big deal now, and it could possibly get pulled for breaking the MS Store's terms of service. Back in 2017, Microsoft banned video game emulators or similar programs on their stores and have been pretty firm on their stance ever since, simply to cover their asses legally. A real RetroArch developer confirmed this version is clearly violating terms of service in a Reddit thread. Furthermore, the RetroArch website straight up says there is no official retail version and they are not involved with the retail group at all. Regular folk like you and me won't face any bans with downloading and using these programs in retail and Microsoft has been silent on these backdoor emulators for now. There's always the possibility they'll catch on one day and shut it all down. Probably not a good long-term emulation method, but again, this practice is fragile on these machines. Still, retail mode has some damn good emulation and is now easier to do than ever before. It makes you feel kinda shady with all the workarounds, unofficialness of it all, and gorilla-esque software running on your Xbox, but just shut up and enjoy it while you can. It's good to have all these options available to get the most out of your favorite rectangle. In summation, Microsoft did an oopsie causing some folks to panic and jump to conclusions, sending out some misinformation. The company has been putting in the work to patch things up and assured us all that dev mode isn't going anywhere. It'd be more harmful to them to get rid of it if they did. Also, I didn't include this detail earlier because it's been proven false and arbitrary. MVG in some articles stated deactivation of your dev account would occur after 90 days of inactivity or not publishing anything in the store. No. A lot of folks have had a dev account just to emulate well past 90 days, including me. I started back in June. And actual developers have claimed to publish one thing in the store and since then have had an inactive account for years without any consequences. It was a system error by Microsoft that they are now correcting. We're fine. Also, retail emulation without a whitelist is now a thing and it's pretty good. It's not a super viable alternative to dev mode, but it's a great option you can use and explore. Okay, I'm gonna shut up about series emulation for now. Unless something cool or crazy happens, I'm not touching the subject for a while. I'll gladly answer your comments about the subject as best I can, and for as long as I want to. I'm going to return to Skyrim Xbox mods for now, as there are some new things there I want to check out. Also, I want to work on some other topics and projects, so look forward to that if you enjoyed this deviation from my bread and butter content. Subscribe or something, do the bell, uh, do people still ask for that? I don't know, I don't care. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. My name is Efren. Adios.